Are you now curious about which specific ancestor in your family tree was a king or royalty? Is it true that all men are brothers? It's fascinating to consider that when people address each other as brother, it could hold some truth that we are all related to each other. But how far back does this connection go? When did the first human, the biological Adam and Eve, appear on Earth? And why did they never meet? When did this monkey finally become human? What would the common ancestor of all living organisms look like? And how did it come into existence? Have you ever pondered about the number and whereabouts of your relatives? It's a thought-provoking question worth exploring. Do you recall that highly popular game? In it, you had to connect the squares to double the numbers. You can also imagine your family tree. The first generation of your ancestors consists of only two people, your father and mother. The second generation consists of four of your ancestors including your parents' parents. The third generation has eight people, all of whom lived at the same time. Subsequent generations of your family tree consist of your parents' grandparents and beyond, with the number of people doubling in each generation. For example, one generation had 16 of your relatives, another generation had 32, and so on. It may seem like such a picture could go on indefinitely, but let's look at the math behind it. Here are the same 16 ancestors in the fourth generation, 32 in the fifth generation. However, when we trace the family tree back in time, we find that about 29 generations ago, around 1150 AD, you already had 530, seven million ancestors. That number, 537 million ancestors, is one and a half times the global population in 1150 AD which was around 340 million. Moving on, if we continue with our calculations up to the 40th generation, we would find that your ancestors would have exceeded one quadrillion in number. However, we must keep in mind that all these people would have lived roughly around the same time. And it is not feasible to have one quadrillion individuals living concurrently. To put this into perspective, one quadrillion is more than the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There are about 200 billion stars in the Milky Way today. The number of people who have ever lived on our planet is estimated at about 100 billion. But we counted one trillion ancestors over a period of only 40 generations ago. About 7,000 generations have passed since our species began. So the root of your family tree would be two to the power of 7,000 individuals. Based on our earlier calculations, it is not possible for each individual to have two to the power of 7,000 ancestors. If this were true, the Earth and the entire cosmos would be filled with the remains of deceit ancestors. In fact, there would not be enough matter in the universe to contain such a vast number of dead people. Our earlier calculations were based on the assumption that each person can only occupy a single position in the family tree. However, this assumption overlooks the fact that incestuous relationships, whether between close relatives or cousins, have been historically prevalent in many societies, although such behavior has been widely condemned. It has also been a persistent feature of human societies throughout history, even before the development of civilizations. The ideal family tree consists of 14 ancestors in three generations. But if cousins marry, the number of ancestors is reduced by two because they share a grandparent. Despite the condemnation of incestuous relationships, many famous figures, such as Einstein and Darwin, married their cousins. Incest is a serious accusation, but it has been common throughout history. There is evidence of such behavior in the genealogies of some royal families. Royal families kept meticulous genealogical records. And from them, we can learn about the most shocking cases of incestuous relationships, such as King Charles II of Spain, who suffered from genetic deformities. Five generations before him, his ancestors engaged in incest with their uncles, nieces, cousins, and third cousins, resulting in the birth of children. Nature does not like closely related offspring because it can lead to the accumulation of bad genes which can lead to various defects. Carl, for example, was born with numerous health problems for this reason, including epilepsy, soft bones, and an unattractive jaw. Studies by anthropologists have shown that a large proportion, up to 
of all marriages throughout history have been between relatives who are third cousins or even more closely related. But why? Why did people continue to be intimate with their brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, and other close relatives? It is hard to believe, but the reason for the prevalence of cousin marriages throughout history has been the lack of bicycles. One could not go far from his village on foot, and not everyone could afford a horse. As a result, marriages within the family became a practical solution. This is no joke, for studies have shown that in Britain, the number of marriages between cousins declined significantly when bicycles became widely available. Similar scenarios occurred on islands and in remote settlements until transportation options improved and people could travel to more remote places to find partners. Unfortunately, because of the limited availability of genealogical records, we may never know our entire family history beyond our great-grandparents. The more we delve into our family tree, the more ancestors we discover, making it increasingly difficult to research their lives, appearances, and even names. As we trace our family history farther back in time, the number of ancestors in our family tree increases, leading to a greater likelihood of a match with the family tree of someone you know. It is quite possible that at some point in the past, your family trees have crossed and you have common ancestors. Visualizing this concept is like seeing a dense forest with trees branching out in all directions. As one moves up the family tree, the number of branches increases, increasing the likelihood of intersection with neighboring trees. Computer models representing the origins of two random people can be very complex and difficult to understand because of the many connections and relationships between ancestors. Consider two individuals living in a region with a population of 100,000 people. If we trace their family trees back nine generations, we may find five common ancestors between them. However, after an additional five generations, the number of common ancestors increases to over 3,000. In real populations, not just computer models, research has shown that the family trees of all Europeans are connected through a dense web of relationships dating back to around 1000 AD. This means that the majority of Europeans share common ancestors from this time period, highlighting the interconnectedness of our global family history. For about 30, 32 generations in the past, there have been groups of people who are the common ancestors of all modern Europeans with healthy offspring. This implies that anyone of European descent, including Russians, Germans, French, Americans, or those descendants of settlers after colonization, is related by blood to all the royal European dynasties that existed before 1000 AD, such as the Habsburgs, Rurikovich, and Carolinians. Asians don't get upset. According to the same mathematical model, you will also have a Chinese emperor and a Persian ruler. But this is only Europe and Asia. What if we go further and look for a progenitor who unites the whole world? It is likely that such a person exists. According to the math, every person has a common grandfather who lived about 3,500 years ago. Allow me to refresh your memory that our understanding of this topic is based on a mathematical model. However, it should be noted that this model does not incorporate tribes such as the Amazonian Aborigines, who are much more distantly related to the rest of the world's population. Our discussion pertains to finding a common ancestor for individuals who have had contact with other civilizations. Consequently, each of us can be regarded as at least a cousin or a sibling to one another. It follows that whoever you have a familial connection with, that bond is in a sense an example of incest. Yes, in a sense, we share genes from that common ancestor, but the situation is complicated. To illustrate, imagine a DNA strand as a square, representing all the genes in an individual's DNA. Half of these genes come from the mother and half from the father. Each successive generation receives fewer genes from their ancestors with only a quarter of genes coming from the grandparent, one eight from the grand-grandparent, and so on, decreasing with each generation. After 35 generations, an individual will have an ancestor from whom they have not inherited a single DNA letter. You may be a descendant of a Mongol Khan or an African shaman, 
But there are not enough genes from these ancestors in the nuclei of your cells to prove your kinship. And there is one way to find our father and mother, our Adam and Eve. Yes, they were black. But instead of studying genes, which are often shuffled around like a deck of cards, there is a more reliable solution. The answer is the mitochondria. These tiny organelles were once individual bacteria, living their own lives more than two billion years ago, long before dinosaurs and other complex organisms appeared. They came to an agreement that the mitochondria would provide energy and the new host would provide protection from a dangerous environment. As a result, they gained a foothold in our predecessors, bringing with them a special type of genetic material, circular DNA. Today, mitochondria exist in almost all forms of life, serving as evidence of our common ancestry. Furthermore, this circular DNA is inherited exclusively through the maternal line. Are there genes that are exclusively passed on from fathers to their offspring? Yes. This particular package of DNA is known as Y chromosome, which carries the most important gene responsible for the development of the male body. Only fathers can pass this chromosome to their sons because women do not possess it. The Y chromosome is solely inherited from the father, while the circular mitochondrial DNA is exclusively transmitted from the mother these unique types of DNA do not mix with genes from the other parent and remain relatively unchanged, accumulating only occasional random mutations every few thousand years. This distinctive characteristic of slow change over long periods of time allows us to track our ancestry and learn about the movements of early human populations on Earth. By examining the genetic makeup of different African tribes, Researchers observed that a southern tribe had five specific mutations, while a northern tribe had those same mutations along with an additional one. This led them to conclude that the northern tribe likely originated from the southern tribe, with some members moving closer to the equator. Through the study of DNA samples from diverse populations across all continents, scientists have constructed mutation pathways for all of humanity enabling them to track the historical migration routes of early human populations around the world. Much like a navigator, the study of genetic mutations has enabled researchers to construct a vast map detailing the migration patterns of early human populations. Moreover, genetic evidence has provided an answer to how ancient humans first reached the Americas by crossing the Bering Strait on foot during the Ice Age. When we trace the I chromosome and circular DNA pathways separately, we find that they both lead us to the same man and woman, who are the common ancestors of all humans. These genes lead us to a father and mother, Adam and Eve, common to all humans, but not in the biblical sense, but based on genetic data. These real people lived between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago and never met each other. Unlike the biblical Adam and Eve, who are believed to have lived at the same time, these genetic ancestors of mankind are separated by thousands of years. Adam and Eve were not the only people of their time. However, the chains of descendants from other people were broken for various reasons. For instance, some lineages were interrupted by illnesses, while others were childless. In contrast, the lines of offspring from Adam and Eve have continued uninterrupted to the present day. Nevertheless, little is known about these genetic ancestors beyond their existence as a common link among all humans. Their physical features, activities, and manner of death are unknown, and it is even possible that we would not be able to recognize their remains if we were to discover them. We do know that they each had children, which means they were real individuals who left behind a genetic legacy that is now present in every human being on the planet. Presently, all humans, including Eskimos and Australian Aborigines, belong to the same biological species, Homo sapiens. There's a question about where the distinction between ape and man lies. To answer this question, we can consider three distinguishing characteristics known as the hominid triad. These characteristics include uprightness, a hand capable of making tools, and a highly developed brain. To identify the first primate to possess the hominid triad, 
we need to study the human evolutionary tree. This tree includes the different kinds of primates, whose remains have been discovered over time. This differs from the simplified diagrams usually shown in biology classes. The earliest human species, known as Homo rudolfensis, is believed to be the first true human, even though this human's brain is twice as large as that of the ape ancestors of Australopithecus. It still resembles a furry primate and lacks such features as an upright posture or the ability to use tools. Despite being classified as Homo, this man has not yet achieved full humanity. Moving on, Homo habilis, he could make stone tools to kill or butcher meat. This is the second trait of man, and it is present here. This trait was even more strongly pumped by the ancestor closer to us, Homo ergaster. He is believed to have learned how to make fire. Taking another step forward in evolution, we find Homo erectus possessing all the basic traits we were looking for an upright posture, a large brain, and practical skills. At some point, between the emergence of Homo habilis and Homo erectus, which occurred about 1.52 million years ago, all three defining traits of humans appeared. However, the transition from beast to man was not a sudden event, but rather a gradual process. There is no single person who can be unequivocally called the first man because the evolution of human traits occurred smoothly and gradually. It is like the paradox of Theseus. If you change an object gradually, it is difficult to determine at what point it becomes something new. Each frame in the animation of human evolution can be seen as a snapshot of one of the earliest humans. Ultimately, humans are the pinnacle of evolution. Although other great apes evolve and evolve alongside us, given enough time, it is possible that other ape species will evolve to become more human. This process is explained by the theory of evolution and can help to answer a common question posed by evolution's critics. Why aren't monkeys evolving into humans today? To answer this, we must look back approximately 15 million years to a species known as Proconsul which is considered to be a close ancestor of both humans and apes in Asia and Africa. Due to climate change, the jungle was dying, and as a result, the proconsul species was forced to come down from the trees. Over time, this species evolved into modern humans. However, those proconsul individuals that were not threatened by the changing environment continued to live in the trees and evolved into modern monkeys. The branches on the evolutionary tree that lead to gorillas and chimpanzees are separate from the branch that led to humans. It is important to note that while modern apes share similarities with humans, they are not our direct ancestors. Modern apes have evolved to thrive in their current environment, and they will not descend from trees, walk upright, or develop cognitive abilities like humans. And if you think that's where our animal cousins end, think again. Let's take bananas, dinosaurs, and the cutest quoque, drop fish and plague bacteria. So which one do you think is relevant to us? We call your attention to the useful Tree of Life Explorer online tool, which allows users to select any creature and see how many common ancestors it shares with other organisms. This tool gives a fascinating insight into the interconnectedness of all living things. For example, here is your common ancestor with a bird. And the bird itself turns out to be as distantly related to us as this pine tree. We have explored the entire tree of life and gained a deeper understanding of the origins and evolution of living organisms. Even if someone disagrees with the theory of evolution, the evidence suggests that all people on Earth are related as distant cousins. For those willing to explore unconventional views, there's another theory that suggests that genes are linked and that living organisms such as humans, cats, and mosses are simply tools that allow clumps of genes to reproduce as new genomes and move around the planet. Indeed, such a perspective can be sobering. It suggests that living organisms are simply vessels for genes and that the evolutionary tree is simply a journey of genes with many transplants. And as usual, pump your brain. It gives you an evolutionary advantage. Bye.